I'm very excited to be here to talk to you today about intramural research programs and how we're advancing science and healthcare through NINR's innovative intramural training programs. So today my talk will be on three areas. One is on NIH on-campus training, the programs that we offer to extramural nurse scientists. The second topic will be research fellowships, and those are opportunities for people to come to our intramural research program and conduct research here. And then I'll touch brief briefly on career development awards. So let's start with NIH on-campus training, and you've had some introductions to a couple of them. The first is the uh, annual Symptom Methodologies Boot Camp. This year at, on, at 2018, we hosted over 175 uh, nurse scientists, scientists, clinician scientists to come in to NIH for one week to learn from practicing scientists and clinician scientists on their approach to smart technology, smart health. Uh, so every other year, we focus on a new emerging area of science, and past topics have uh, focused on precision health from omics to data science. We've talked about pain, fatigue, sleep, and big data. Uh, and the program has grown. It's grown from about 70 or so participants to now over 175. And as Dr. Cashin mentioned earlier, there were two new features to the boot camp this year. We had a symposium on the first day where we opened up registration to all NIH. It was not uh, uh, so to highlight the NINR uh, research and uh, scientific programs. And we also featured a poster session so that participants could network and learn from each other and understand what areas of research they were undertaking. The registration usually opens early April, and uh, it does close quickly. So um, be at your computers ready to register so that you can attend. And they are usually held at the end of July or beginning of August. The second program that we feature is the Summer Genetics Institute. It's held every June. It's one month intensive training, and I mean intensive. So there are lectures and there's hands-on uh, laboratories that participants uh, partake in. And the lectures are part uh, molecular and part clinical with, a, with those focuses. When they come into the lab, it's hands-on, so they're learning molecular techniques. It's PCR, flow cytometry, and there's also an opportunity to learn about uh, cell culture. So they're in there working in groups and uh, getting the, the hands-on knowledge. The program started in 2000, and so we just finished our 19th SGI, the Summer Genetics Institute. So far, we've ha we have over 400 alumni, and each year we select 25 people to come to NIH to train. It's a competitive program, and by the end of the month-long training, each participant earns eight graduate-level credits. So those people who are in graduate school can petition their university to accept those credits on their transcript. Applications open mid-November and close March 1st. Um, so we encourage your faculty, early faculty, graduate students to please apply. And I'm here to answer any questions about the application process. The second part of my talk, I want to ta tell you about research fellowships. And this allows people to come to our intramural program to train. Um, we have about 30 to 50 intramural fellows, depending on the time of year. This year, we hosted 13 summer interns. And um, we have a range of fellows from pre-doc GPP or graduate partnerships program fellows, post-baccalaureate, and postdoctoral fellows. Um, the percentages are for pre-doc fellows. We have about 15% of our fellows that make up uh, pre-doc fellows. Half are post-backs, and the remaining 35% remaining are postdocs. This picture is from uh, this year's summer poster session, and we had 18 poster presenters. Um, and you can see that they all were very excited to be there and answer questions. They, they got a lot of good questions, too. So postbacs can come train within NINR and work with an NINR investigator to agree upon an area of research that they will pursue. 
Um, they contribute to nursing science through authorship and by presenting at uh, national uh, research conferences. And um, the way the application works is that prospective postdoctoral fellows contact investigators directly. While they're here doing their training, we offer workshops on grant writing, and they also have exposure to be in the lab and also to do the clinical translational research so they can get experience writing clinical protocols. So they get experience from writing the protocol to going through IRB approval and then implementing that clinical protocol. So what happens to the postdocs once they leave? Um, I have highlighted two here, Dr. Kristen Dickinson, who is um, just recently left the intramural, re both of these uh, fellows just recently left. Dr. Kristen Dickinson is an assistant professor at the uh, University of Nebraska Medical Center. And Dr. Anna Dielo has recently accepted a faculty position at Virginia Commonwealth University. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Kristen. But over the past five years, we've had 14 people complete their postdoctoral fellowships. Half are in, currently in an academic uh, faculty position. A, a little over, about 15% have scientific or clinical uh, positions with other institutions, and uh, just over 20% have taken on additional fellowships for additional training. The second opportunity for, to do intramural research is with the Graduate Partnerships Program, or GPP for short. It's a doctoral fellowship training program that coordinates the training and funding for PhD students from a school of nursing. Um, so Tara, Dr. Barr mentioned that the program has changed slightly. So the way it works now is that students from uh, pursuing their PhD in a school of nursing can apply at the beginning of their second year. They'll finish all their coursework at the home institution and then can come, if everything is successful, it's a competitive application process. If everything is successful, then they can enter the intramural program in their third year and conduct their dissertation research here. Um, so we fund for two to three years of doctoral fellowship program, and applications are now being accepted until December 3rd, I believe is the deadline. Uh, two, three letters of recommendation are due December 7. So here I've highlighted some of the recent re dissertation topics that graduate students have undertaken. The two in blue are people who have just graduated. So pictured here um, is Kristen Weaver. She just graduated from New York University and is conducting her graduate, or excuse me, her postdoctoral fellowship at Johns Hopkins. She worked with uh, Dr. Wendy Henderson on the brain-gut axis and in patients with irritable bowel syndrome. And she's doing a clinical translational postdoc at Hopkins. Uh, Katie Edwards, who you'll hear from later in today's program, did her dissertation work with Dr. Gill. And she'll tell you about her work and her continuing work to look at peripheral uh, biomarkers for um, patients who have experienced traumatic brain injury. And for her dissertation, she looked at blast exposure in a clinical po population. So the people in uh, black are those that are current students. So Stephanie Prescott is uh, pictured here, and you'll also hear from her later in the program. She's studying antibiotic exposure during gestation and how it affects offspring, especially when they're fed a Western diet. Megan Murray, who uh, presented a poster today, start, just started the GPP program in June, so we're very excited that she has the opportunity to describe her work and her plans for her dissertation work here. And Delia uh, Jalilova just started today, and uh, she's our newest GPP student, so we welcome her and Meg um, to the GPP. So here are, I've pictured a few of the uh, graduate students who have come through the program. To date, we've had, um, so the G GPP program started in 2004, and we've had 22 current and former GPP students. So 14 have successfully completed the program, and uh, they've all had strong outcomes. They publish, they attend meetings, they disseminate their research. 
Uh, almost half um, are continuing their research and they have, um, are undertaking a postdoc. 20% uh, are faculty. Um, you heard Dr. Mayor mention, and she's pictured right here. 20% uh, are staff at an academic institution, and they are conducting scientific clinical translational research, um, such as Dr. Ann Ersing. You saw her, an earlier picture of her um, in Dr. Barr's presentation. And about 15% are in uh, working at a for-profit institution or as an entrepreneur as Dr. Barr, and she is pictured right here. So uh, in 2014, we published on the uh, NINR GPP program, and we sent a survey asking uh, for feedback and comments from former GPP students. And I've highlighted just a couple here. Um, one mentioned that the NINR GPP opened additional doors that would otherwise not have been possible. And I think this um, kind of expands on that a little bit, where She's here. She said, maintaining close ties with my home university helped me ground my work in nursing, but the NIH introduced me to research questions, methods, and theories that should, simply had not been considered to that point. So it opens up the opportunity to do research and ask different questions and be mentored by lots of different people within NIH and also maintain those ties with the home university. The third type of uh, training fellowship that we have at NIH is a post-baccalaureate fellowship. We train uh, one up to two years that uh, post-bacs can be mentored by an NINR investigator. And these are uh, people who have finished their, po their baccalaureate degree and wish to gain a little bit more research experience. And the goal is that they will pursue additional educational opportunities. And so um, we have, um, they also contribute to nursing science through authorship. They are co-authors on papers, and they do attend um, meetings to disseminate their work. And here I've highlighted just a few of the people who have graduated and to, to give you an overview of where they go. So the, the goal, as I mentioned, is to, go, to get more education. About 30% go to graduate school, mostly to pursue a PhD. 30% go to medical school. 10% go to nursing school. And 15% go to other professional schools, such as um, physician's assistant or clinical psych. And I'm just going to highlight a couple of the stories here. So here is Oni Ozoji. She came to NINR as a summer intern as a community college student. She continued on to do her research here. And as a result of the experience that she gained and, and because of her academic performance, she uh, transferred to University of Maryland uh, to pursue her BSN and got a full ride. So we're very excited about Oni. Quang Nguyen, uh, so Oni worked with uh, Dr. Wendy Henderson under her mentorship. Quang Nguyen worked with uh, Dr. Leo Saligan, and he was looking at uh, the molecular underpinnings of chronic fatigue. And when he came to NINR, he knew he wanted to go to, back to school, but he wasn't quite sure where he would go. He was thinking maybe med school, but he was still exploring opportunities. And then after working in Dr. Saligan's group, he decided that nursing school was where he wanted to be. So he is now in an accelerated BSN program at Marymount, and we're really excited. He just left, I think, like two or three weeks ago, so he's just now starting his program. Uh, Anna Ko, she is a postback who is working with Dr. Katie Mayor, and uh, she was looking at, um, I, I think she did some clinical work where she interacted with patients and looking at um, the six minute test and some of their clinical measures for patients who have RYR1 new, uh, variations in that gene. So she was accepted into her top choice of Tufts University, and she's now uh, going to physician's assistant school. She's just starting her first year this summer. 
Both uh, Vita Motamedi and Rebecca Konevsky worked with Dr. Jessica Gill, and they were looking at the molecular underpinnings of traumatic brain injury. So they were both busy in the lab extracting RNA and then running protein assays in the Samoa instrument, which is a very highly sensitive um, ELISA where it quantitates at single molecule levels. So they were um, heavy in the lab, and they are both now have kind of graduated from the NINR intramural program. Vita got her top pick. She's now at med school at Wake Forest University. And Rebecca got her top pick at University of Central Florida. And she's in a PhD clinical psych program. So we're all really excited about our graduates. And um, they are just shine. They just provide light and shine um, our intramural program. The last uh, fellowship opportunity I want to talk to you about are summer interns. So we accept summer intern students uh, through graduate and professional school. It allows people to come do research for up to eight weeks within the intramural research program, and it's highly competitive. So at NIH, we get 6,000 applications, and only 1,000 people at NIH-wide are accepted. <clears throat> and I uh, am showing this picture from last year's cohort. Uh, this is just a sampling of the summer interns we had last year. Um, Farida and uh, Berwin worked with uh, Dr. Leo Saligan uh, looking at the molecular underpinnings of chronic fatigue. Um, Farida is a uh, community college student, and Berwin, I think he's finishing up his uh, undergraduate degree in the University of Maryland. Hannah Davidson and Emma Butterini both worked with Dr. Hendy, uh, Wendy Henderson, excuse me. And uh, Hannah, um, she came first as a community college student and has now transferred to, to a four-year uni four university. And she was um, recently accepted into this competitive program at NIH. It's called the Undergraduate Scholarship Program. And this program funds tuition and specified expenses, and the scholar in turn agrees to, be, to come back to NIH as a summer intern and do intramural research one year for every year that they're supported. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, she's also a co-author on one of Dr. Henderson's papers. Uh, and then Mary Blake worked with Dr. Katie Mayor, and uh, within an eight-week period, uh, she's a medical school, school student from Loma Linda, within an eight-week period, she started to put the pieces in place to uh, culture primary muscle cells. And I thought it was an amazing amount of work that she was able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. So it speaks to the talent of our fellows, and it speaks to the mentoring of our investigators. And uh, lastly, uh, I want to just make a plug. Uh, Dr. Gill mentioned this earlier. We frequently get requests and questions from outside extramural nurse scientists. Well, uh, you do uh, some amazing work. I want to learn about RNA extraction. I want to learn how to use this different instrument. Is it possible for me to come train? And so we do want to open up um, the opportunity for nurse scientists to come do rotations in NINR labs. And we're also very happy to offer tours. So if someone is interested to learn how um, we share the space and how the instruments are used and what kinds of questions you can ask, please feel free to contact me or one of the investigators that uh, most closely aligns with your question, and we can try to work something out. So the last topic that I want to talk to you today about um, is the Career Development Awards, and I'll just briefly touch on this. So most of you are probably familiar with the NIH Pathway to Independence Award, the K99 to R00. So there, we are a federal agency, and intramural fellows can apply for certain grants, um, I'm not going to highlight all of them, but I will talk to you about the K99R00. So it provides up to five years of support, two years mentored within the intramural program, and then the R00 up to three years at an outside academic institution. And uh, Dr. Kristen Dickinson was awarded the K99R00. 
Um, she fo focused on cancer-related fatigue, and um, she was mentored by Dr. Saligan as a postdoc fellow for two years, but actually even before that, she was a GPP student. So she was at NINR for a few years, um, got all the tools and resources she needed, and now she's launching her independent career at University of Nebraska Medical Center. So we're really excited and happy for her and wish her the best of luck. And in closing, um, I present my email address and my phone number. I'm, I'm happy to help with anything, facilitate, answer questions, um, and then I also give you the the Division of Intramural Research website where you can learn about all the different training opportunities and about the research programs of the NINR investigators. So with that, I close and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Tamez. Any questions? Looks like you're off the hook for a little <laughs> while anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you.